now look at what we have. What's up everybody? Chris Jones here with the World's Worst Fishing. Thanks for uh, coming back and uh, spending time with us, taking time out of your schedule to watch us make baits in our garage. Um, with that said, it is officially new mold day. Now this mold has already been released and a lot of you already have it. Um, however, this is particularly sort of a special release because it's two. So, adding to the Rip Wrap family, uh, we already had two Rip Wrap swim bait molds available. Now there are two more and we have them here. So now we're gonna be demonstrating and showing you and comparing and contrasting the whole family of four. Four Rip Wraps. Um, that's absolutely incredible. I mean, the world needs four Rip Wraps and I'm glad that we have them. Okay, so I believe this is the 4.2 inch and the 4.8 inch, um, which I believe have um, hook slot inserts because they are larger. And these are probably tail molds. Oh yeah, okay. All right, we were right about one, 4.2. All right, so there's the tail mold for the 4.2. I like it. Small, concise, out of the way. You get your tails. All right. And let's see if, okay, so if my theory is correct, if I remember the sizes correctly, this is the 4.8. But would you look at that? We got it right. 4.8 riprap. Boy, look at the size of that. That's a beast. It's a beast of a tail. Awesome. Probably going to get an awesome bond <clears throat> as well there. Okay. What do we have here? We have a note. Original prototype. Very cool. I love kind of getting to play with the early, uh, with, with the earlier successful versions. Okay. Looks like this one already has the uh, slots in there. This is so much fun. Let's zoom out if we can, yeah. All right, let's take a look. Yeah. Beautiful. So I believe that's the 4.2. Just kind of looking at it, just sizing it up. Yeah, that's awesome, isn't it? Yeah. Right, so... Let's see, it said that on the note, right? 4.2, yep, okay. Yep, that's the 4.2. So we'll set that on the hot plate. <clears throat> then here's the big daddy. Looks like some slot, okay, some dummy, looks, okay. So it looks like uh, we also have some dummy slot inserts if you wanna make it a solid body as well. That's what that looks like to me. Okay, cool, we will set those aside. Make sure we know where those went. Yeah, look at this. This is this is big stuff. This is almost a five inch swim bait here. Yeah. I'll tell you guys, the Rip Wrap is an awesome bait. Whenever I did my uh, live bait making seminar, the 3.8 Rip Wrap was the star of the show. That's what uh, the two saltwater guys were just crazy about, was the ability to make a little swim bait with a tail like that. There it is, the 4.8. Wow, what a beast. Okay, look at that spread right there. Is that not awesome? Just look at the rip wrap madness. So, um, little, but not to be underestimated. We have the, uh, the little baby 2.8. Beautiful, beautiful. This, so what I like about this mold, and I probably said this whenever I did the video on this one, is that it's small enough, you're almost like getting into panfish territory and uh, obviously perfect for like white bass, hybrid stripers, and uh, umbrella rigs. So same can be said for the 3.8. This is an Alabama rig slayer, okay? Yeah, look at that. All right, so those are the ones that we've had there for a little bit. And then obviously we, we are now into the bigger sizes, okay? Yeah, boy, that's cool. So just a little size comparison here. Here's the 4.2. Here is a four inch open pour. So just for uh, some size reference there. 
that's um, kind of the the profile and um, sort of body size you know they're actually pretty much the same height yeah so lots of meat there obviously a much different tail profile but there's your uh, size comparison so yeah here's our weapon of choice and uh, like with any plastic just to show you all a little bit of the prep process in case you're new to the channel or new to bait making uh, this is liquid plastisol compound, which is what we use to make soft plastics. So these baits chilling right here that um, That were in the hand pour molds started off like this as a milky white substance This is polyvinyl chloride resin mixed with uh, plasticizer oils and uh, you can see the resin and the oils mixing together so we're gonna give this a good mixing and then our plastic is ready for preparation so yeah, all part of the process here to uh, to make the best bait that we can. All right, so here we go. We have a cup of DOP uh, swim bait blend, and we're going to go with just an old school, simple color, but I think something that will showcase the mold really well. It'll look really good in the bait, and it's just a straight up fish catcher. Okay, so this is good old fashioned watermelon seed. Some some of you may call this more of just a regular green pumpkin. Some even may call it a pumpkin seed. See, when I think of pumpkin seed, I think of something a little bit more orange. However, this is what I would call watermelon seed. It's just watermelon pigment. And then some seeds, black flake. Simple, simple, simple. But whenever we use the tail molds, this will look good because it'll be uh, watermelon with chartreuse tail, which again, we're not going to get too crazy complicated with the colors today. That was last video when we did the Northern Lights baits. Today we're going to go with good old fashioned fish catching colors that you can make at home right off the bat your very first time. All right. Feeling good. I believe that one's the 4.8 and this one's the 4.2. That one felt like it drank a little bit more plastic. Yeah. Right, everybody, new molds. So we got to do a drum roll reveal. We are going to execute a double stroke roll from slow to fast. So here we go. Dun, 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 dun. Let's see which one is first. It's probably the 4.8. Yes, it is. Oh, baby. Look at that. Flawless execution. Filled perfectly. No air pockets or little divots in the tail. Yeah. No dents. Wow, just look at that. Pretty color, huh? Just simple, simple, simple. That's gonna look killer with a chartreuse tail. I think that'll be the perfect tail mold combination is to stick with the um, watermelon seed and then just go with a, oops, with a chartreuse tail. Okay, so this one's gonna come out all different ways, looks like. <laughs> okay, well, all right, we'll show you this one first. Absolutely flawless. It reminds me of um, shooting the DRs or the Bloodline swim bait molds, which are also oriented single top port injection with the uh, slot inserts. Yeah, okay. Well, so I guess it's time to get them out and we'll take a closer look. First thing that comes to mind is how well the mold performed. The tail's all filled, perfectly round. Every once in a while, if air gets trapped, you'll see like little divots or something, you know, doesn't quite fill out. Um, you know, which can happen in top port injection. Top port injection is probably the most temperamental way 
um, it, at least it has given me more trouble over the years than any other type but as we can see we have a flawless run here so let's go ahead and remove those and there's what the bait really looks like and then of course we can take our slot insert out and then here's the final thing perfect that right there will be an absolute Alabama rig destroyer okay then here's here's the big daddy here's the 48 yep everything filled really nicely yep get these out yeah I'm, I'm excited to get to those tail molds look at that gosh yep that's a pretty big bait I like it and we'll go ahead and show you what uh, what it looks like as a hollow body yeah excellent work excellent work there it is okay all right round one was a success and I uh, I had no other expectation all right tail mold time <clears throat> so here we go tail molds don't require very much plastic so we're gonna go ahead and uh, do both of these at once good lord didn't even feel the injector move okay well hopefully they filled in they should have okay moving on uh, 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 there we go yeah this should look pretty good and again sorry for all the background laundry noise but now we have to get this tail into this tiny little crevice right so we need some sort of lubrication okay so what i like to use is just worm oil okay it's got to have some sort of lubrication to help it slide into place which boy that sounds bad um, but <laughs> in any event we just need a little bit of worm oil so just enough to kind of coat maybe our fingertips and the actual tail itself and then it will go right into place there's really no like you can't put it in incorrectly it either goes in or it doesn't so again just enough to kind of coat things all right and there we go it'll fall right into place ah, same with the 4-2 all right maybe get just a little bit more oil on it yeah down she goes okay all right and then now basically we want to make sure that the tops of these edges are also oiled because now we have to close the mold and it not only has to fit in this side it has to fit in the top side as well all right luckily you have all these locating pegs which basically means it can only go on there the right way looks like one of them didn't go so see how that didn't quite shut all the way? You'll you'll know when it when it really goes. Looks like one of the tails is giving me trouble. So we're gonna add a little bit more oil. Just gonna put some on the table. I'm really really gonna lube these up. Really 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 make sure that uh, things are are really ready to slide on there correctly. Oops, <laughs> I dropped it. Come on, baby. And we'll get it here in a minute. There it is. <laughs> All right, third time was the charm there. All right, and now for the 4-2. Yeah, look at that, first attempt. All right, yep. That felt like it closed all the way. All right, time to fill in the bodies. All right, here we go. Let's see how we did. Hopefully these are ready to be opened. We gave them just a few minutes time. All right, oh yeah. Let's see if we can put the genie back in the bottle here. Yeah. Get them straightened the back out. Look at that. Ha <laughs> ha. Look at that. Pretty neat. 
I love how because we didn't uh, op opaque our colors, we actually have a really smooth gradient. The transition from the, ah, oh, look at that laundry. The transition from the um, watermelon to the chartreuse, we have a nice, beautiful blend of color gradient, um, which was something that I was hoping to achieve, but you never know till you open the mold. That's the thing, you never know how it looks until you know how it looks. Okay, that one's gonna come out on that side. Yeah, same thing here. Wow, look at how seamless the tail bond is, not only structurally, but also in terms of color. That is beautiful. Wow, look at that. Gorgeous. Look at the color, look at the gradients. Ugh. And best of all, the tail, the tail mold um, bonded really well to the baits. Yep. Watermelon chartreuse tail. I love it. Really cool there. You gotta love that. All right, laminate time. So we're gonna stick with the theme of kind of doing more simple colors. And we're going to do a black and blue laminate. Good old fashioned black and blue. All right, let's see where that takes us. Yeah. Love black and blue. Along with your pumpkin seed, or with your um, green pumpkins and watermelon seeds, this is one of the all time great fish catching colors at our disposal as soft bait makers. This is about as basic yet tried and true as it gets. So we definitely need more black. That was not near uh, saturated enough. That's more of a charcoal than it is black. Sort of a smoke, sort of a smoke gray there rather than like a true black. So let's up the sat, up the saturation. You can see a little bit more saturation. However, we're not quite there. Ten more drops ought to do it. So there we go. That's looking more like it down there. All right, and then now for some flake. So we're going to add blue flake to both sides. This is literally black and blue. Black and blue with blue flake. All right, guys, here we go. Let's see how they laminate. Top side is on the right side, so we're going to do the black top, then the blue belly. I think that'll look pretty good. Sorry for all the laundry noise again. I waited a couple hours to come back out here thinking that the laundry would be over, and it is not. Okay. I think we got it. Yeah. Okay, so hopefully we now have three of every size. Look at that, all four rip wraps in a row. <laughs> Too many molds, can't even drum roll them all. All right. There's the big daddies. Of course, they're going to come out on different uh, different sides. Oh my God, look at that, y'all. However, we're going to try to keep it the uh, same. So we're going to... You know what? That might be the 4.2. This might be the, the, the really, really big one. All right. I'm thinking this is actually the, the 4.8. Uh, here we go. Yep, there's the big one. Look at how good they laminate too. Holy moly. Yep, I'd say that uh I'd say that does a perfect just about a perfect laminate. And we'll get some close-up shots where the lighting's a little bit better. Alright, and then for the other two. 
Yeah, check that out. Every single size. Throw some shade on it so that you can see it. Try to block some of the glare. Look at that. So, let's see if we can arrange them here. We'll zoom out just a smidge. Okay, where's the next size up? There's the next size up. A little bit of uh, flash on that one, so we'll get one that didn't have some flash. If I can find it. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> Look at that. Nice family of four. All right, so now we're going to take the, uh, the 4.2, okay? And just show you maybe a couple of rigging ideas. So this is just a Yum Moneyhead Minnow Jig Head. I like to uh, use this on my umbrella rigs a lot. Um, however, we can just show you a quick little way that you can rig this bait, okay? All right. And now we basically want to turn that around, okay? And now using that hook slot, we can now comfortably rig this bait out the top. And looky there. Yep. Yeah. You could even get, you could even get away with a little bit bigger. I believe this is a size four. Um, you know they do make them bigger, and obviously you can use whatever your favorite jig head is. But this is really cool. This is sort of a watermelon seed kind of green pumpkin-ish themed chatterbait, okay? Right? Really pretty. As you can see, that's going to match up perfect. All right? Gold blade chatterbait. This was handmade um, in Canada. So, again, and I always rig them, quote, upside down on a jig head. That's just the way that I do things. So normally, how I would rig this would just be like that, right? However, the real way to do it is still flip the whole thing around, go through the go through the top. It just holds on the hook a little bit better. But just me, just a little pet peeve. Yeah. But in any event, now look at what we have. So the Rip Wrap is an awesome standalone bait, and it's also an awesome bait on the back of something. Um, you know, whether it be a scrounger head, whether it be on an umbrella rig, um, some sort of skirted jig, like a swim jig or a chatterbait. Um, I mean, that right there is a match made in largemouth bass heaven. So, yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, so there we go. Looking good, looking good. So the question of the day is, not necessarily which color was your favorite, but which size. Did you prefer? <clears throat> clean this up the 42 or the 48 which one do you see yourself getting which one do you see yourself throwing the most and then of course we have the other rip wraps so we don't want to leave anyone out here so what I love about this is that you have just an entire family of the same bait just giving you so so many options and then with the two bigger sizes you also have um, the option to use and we didn't get to this in today's video, but to use the dummy inserts to have solid bodies like the two smaller sizes. So what I can do is show you how these work um, in case you're unfamiliar with the concept. But that's essentially what these are, if I can get them out here. And those are your normal slot inserts which create that hollow belly, okay? But with the dummy insert, you do that, all right? And that allows you to now have, actually, it would go this way. My apologies. But now you would have a, um, basically a solid body, okay? Right? So what that does is allows the plastic to fill in the whole thing. And um, you have the solid body version like that. All right, everybody. Well, uh, the temperature still has not gotten any colder around here in North Florida. So fingers crossed that fall temperatures will arrive soon so that we can be a little bit more comfortable and productive out here because it's uh it's hard to be out here and in 100 degrees when the heat index is over 100 um man it just gets bad but um in any event super cool got the whole family of rip wraps there on the hot plate 
Um, what a collection of molds. Something for everybody. And uh, what an awesome bait too. It has been absolutely uh, murdering fish. And uh, I would expect nothing other, you know. Um, the AI hammer mold has been a fish catcher for years. The open pores, of course, the DR, the bloodlines, and really now the riprap. Um, you know, the riprap is sort of the new kid on the block in that collection, um, but has been just an awesome success. I love to see what everyone else does in it. It wears color so beautifully. It laminates really beautifully. And um, what, what I like the most is how user friendly it is. You know, I don't get any, you know, real problems. Um, you know, sometimes top port injection, you get a little bit of tail trouble. Um, this mold, it doesn't play that. It doesn't play that game. So um, yeah, really awesome to have all four sizes, all four of them shot perfectly. Um, but yeah, you know, the new sizes, really cool having that hook slot or solid body um, option. Uh, so I thought that was pretty cool. So. Yeah, no, awesome stuff. I'll link the molds down uh, in the comment section. I'll pin a comment to the top of the comment section with the uh, links to the molds. That just seems to work a little bit better than putting them in the description. Nobody really reads descriptions on YouTube videos anymore. They go straight for the comments. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. But anyway, uh, we are still on the road to 90,000 subs. So please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. And if you have a fishing buddy who's not subbed, Tell him to subscribe. You know, we want to we want to reach our goal of 100,000 and we need all of y'all to help in. If everybody just gets one buddy to do it, we're there. So um, with that said, um, a couple things coming up. Um, we're going to be doing a video coming up soon. Um, sort of what I would consider my list of like either top five or top 10 best bass fishing baits that you can make at home yourself as a beginner um so you know i mean we're going to be talking about stickworm molds um you know craws uh, really sort of a little bit of a back to the basics look at soft bait making and sort of me giving you my top 10 not necessarily my top 10 molds but just the top 10 baits that i think beginners who get into this hobby are gonna want to make as a beginner to go out and catch fish you know on their very first bait that they've made so uh, i think that's going to be a really fun video sort of more back to to my roots on this channel and uh, i'm really looking forward to doing that so with uh without too much chit chat we'll see y'all in the next video definitely check out the ai rip wrap molds they've been a wild success for the longest time and now there's two more um to, to complete out the family i don't know if he's going to do any more sizes um, but I do know that he has something really special planned coming from AI Molds that I am so excited about, I can't even see straight. So um, with that said, be on the lookout for more exciting mold releases. We'll catch you guys later.